today students so now we are down with our final topics and I just need you to hang a little bit on your mind and we'll be over with the subject and I just hope that as we continue discussing all about the topics the remaining topics the important information gets you know stored in your mind so the first on the list is about partial derivatives or partial differentiation now when we talk about partial derivatives you can actually imagine some 3d plane so we're no longer um, restricted to knowing such Cartesian coordinate plane with x and y axis we also have to understand how these partial derivatives work in a way that we consider a 3d Euclidean um, plane so let's say we have x here and then this one is actually the positive x and then this one is let's say that's the positive y and then this one is the positive z so in this case i have actually a 3d plane when where i will be drawing something like uh, this graph okay so this is same, something like a curve but um, you can also represent this as if it's uh, let's say this is u in terms of x y and z so basically this is the graph of this um, u uh, we just don't know what the exact equation is but uh, let's just imagine this being the graph now partial derivatives work as if for example we have one point here and let's name that x y z okay so assuming that uh, there's a point there and then uh, we want to find the change in change in z with respect to y when we held x as constant now let's try projecting this downwards so basically if we have um, something like this patch um, I'll call this patch so um, if we held x constant so basically um, x is constant and we want to try to like uh, move z and y you can actually see that I'm not actually moving at this position um, if x is constant then I can just move from actually this point going to this point or probably from here up to here so that's because basically what happens when we do partial derivatives um, we're trying to make the other variable constant by fixing them and treating them as constant and then uh, we're trying to differentiate the remaining variable so if for example we want to try to fix z so basically the height does not change so you can only freely move from this direction or this direction so uh, if you want to project that um, downwards so basically what we have is just the movement uh, through this region but uh, we can't actually move to any point here in z so if the graph is actually uh, above so basically you can only move from uh, the planar region of x and y and you can actually move your height within those area so that is what happens when uh, we talk about partial derivatives so you can always imagine a 3d plane where we have a 3d plot so um forget this cartesian coordinate plane we're no longer we're already done with that and basically what we do in partial derivatives is we just uh, fix one or more variables as constant and then we try to differentiate the um, equation depending on the condition that needs to be um, differentiated so basically what we have is this um, notations we can express partial derivatives we have for example if we have an equation f so we can actually find the derivative a partial derivative with respect to x so th th this is the expression now this um, uh, symbol something like um, a drop or no, I don't know but um, this is what we call the curly D so that's uh, the best um, expression that can actually describe this because it's not actually um, a letter in the Greek alphabet but it's more of a mathematical symbol that we always use when we're talking about partial derivatives so I just call them the curly D okay because this is actually um, derived from letter D but it just curled something like this so it looks like a curly D okay so the first expression is something like this now we can also express that in terms of the partial derivative of the equation itself 
So for example, your equation is f is equal to um, x squared y plus z. So you can actually um, express the partial derivative. For example, we need to find x. So we have partial f over partial of z. I mean x, or ju let's just use z in this case. So we take the partial derivative of f with respect to z. But we can also express this in terms of the partial derivative of the expression itself. So it's like x squared y plus z and then the partial derivative of z. So you take the partial derivative of this um, whatever is inside this parentheses with respect to z. So that's the second um, description for that. And then we also have this one f of f sub x and then x y or simply f sub x and then z sub x. So it simply means that if you have a function you just have to take the partial derivative of that with respect to the subscript of that function. So in this case, we take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and then if it is f of, let's say, f of z, so we take the partial derivative of f with respect to z. And then for this one, we can read this as if we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x. So this is the easiest notation that we can always use whenever we talk about partial derivatives. So to um, make you understand more, let's solve problems regarding partial differentiation. So what we have here is we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x. So it only means that this is the equivalent of z. I need to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x. So partial derivatives are like those that you used to solve when you were solving optimization problems, wherein, for example, you label or you, yes, you label the dimensions as if it's r and then the other one the, the larger being the capital r when you try to like um, differentiate when r is constant we always treat this as if it's a constant assuming that they would um, give values that are actually um, a real valued number so you just have to apply the same concept here so in this case if we do the first term, we take the derivative of the first term, 3xy, but we know that in this case, since it's partial derivative of z with respect to x, so you take uh, this variable and only treat all the var variables as if that's the variable that we're differentiating, and the rest, you take them as constant. So if it is x, then of course, y is constant here, and then y is constant here. So this one is constant. So you can actually... Um, um, at the back of your mind, you can do something like that. Just always imagine that it's a constant. So we can proceed with differentiation. So we know that if it is constant, you can just copy that. So you have y because that's a constant. And of course, 3 is also a constant. So you can have 3y. And then that's all for this derivative because we know that the derivative of x, since we're trying to differentiate that with respect to x, that's just equal to 1. Okay. So we have plus, we can copy 4y squared because this, those are constants. So we have 4y squared, oops, 4y squared, and then we multiply it with the derivative of x, which is simply equal to 1. Okay, so that's just how simple this expression goes. And then we have our final answer, that's 3y plus 4y squared. So for number 2, we have this expression, then we need to differentiate this with respect to y. So any variable that is not y will be treated constant. So in this case, the first term is 0. And then we have, we, we simply differentiate this because it's not a constant. So we have 8y and then minus 6. Okay, so that's a fairly simple expression or um, equation for this one. Now let's have another one. This is z is equal to ln of the sine 3xy and then we have plus e raised to negative y times r cosine of x and that is z. We need to take the partial derivative of this expression with respect to x. So this is also like expressing the whole um, this notation in terms of partial z with respect to x. Okay. So with this, let's do that. So we'll be treating all of the all other variables as constants. So we have the derivative z sub x is equal to, this one is ln, so we have 1 over sine of 3xy. Then we multiply this with 
cosine of 3xy. And then the derivative of the um, expression inside would be simply 3x since, I mean 3y, since we're differentiating with respect to x. And then we have, this one is a constant, so we have plus e raised negative y. And then the derivative of our cosine with respect to x is simply negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then the derivative of x is simply 1. Okay, So if we try to simplify this, we have z sub x is equal to 3y cosine of 3xy divided by sine of 3xy. And then we have plus or minus. Let's have minus. Minus e raised to negative y all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Now this expression can be further simplified into z sub x is equal to 3y and then we have cotangent of 3xy and then minus e raised to negative y divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, So this is our final answer. Now the trick is always just imagine other variables being constant and you can always find the correct answer doing that. Now for this expression we have f sub z but as you can see here we don't have any expression of f but it is a common sense that we treat this as if it, this is the function that we're talking about because that's the only expression we have. So basically if you see something like this f of z and then you don't have any expression as if it's written in terms of something like this so you'll just treat the expression flashed or expression given as if it's the um, function f. So with this case, we need to differentiate this with respect to z. So the three expressions have, or the three terms have z on them. So we just uh, differentiate each of them. So the first one is 3 raised to z. And this is an exponential function with a constant base. So basically that's 3z and then we take the ln of 3. So that's the derivative. And then this one is minus sine h of z. So that's minus 8 cosine of h and then z. And then this one is logarithm of x, y, z. So the derivative of a log is 1 over, so that's 1 over uh, u. So that's x, y, z. And then we multiply this with 1 over ln of the base and the base here is actually 10 so that's 10 and then the derivative of what's inside so if this is x y z we know very well that we treat x and z i mean x and y as constant so with this case we have only x y okay so we can simplify this further so we have f z or f sub z is equal to 3 raised to z ln of 3 and then minus 8 hyperbolic cosine of z. And then this xy actually cancels out. So we have minus 1 over z. And then that's ln of 10. Okay. So this is our final answer. Okay. So now let's have this one. So we have z. This is the expression of z. And we need to differentiate this with respect to y. Treating others as constant. So we have z sub y is equal to, this one is in ln and there's y inside the expression. So we need to apply differentiation in this um, x, a term. So we have one over the cosine of three x, y. And we know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That's three x, y. And then the derivative of three x, y is simply equal to three x because we treat y as constant. And then we proceed with the next term, so plus. So as you can see here, th that's the inverse of x. And then this, I mean, the tangent inverse of x. And we know that this will be treated as a constant. So with this, the answer here would just be like, this is some scalar multiple. So just copy this one. And then the derivative of e to the y is simply e to the y. Okay. So with this, uh, it just doesn't change. So with this, the derivative is simply equal to negative. 3x and then this one is sine over cosine so that becomes tangent of 3xy and then we have plus e to the y and then tangent inverse of x okay so that's
how simple it is. Now let's have this item. This is expressed in terms of the curly D. So we need to differentiate this with respect to x. Now if we inspect the first term, we know that if y is a constant, then we'll be applying the exponential rule wherein the base is a constant. So with this, we know that the derivative of y to the x treating y as a constant would be y raised to x and then we have ln of y. And then for the next one, we know that if y is a constant, then this is something like the power root. So with this, we have minus y raised to x, I mean times x raised to y minus 1. With this, the final answer can be somehow redefined in terms of y raised to x and then ln of y. And then we have y, I mean minus y x raised to y all over x. We can express this in terms of this expression. Okay, so that's it. But you can also have this as, a, as your final answer. That will matter since um, we can't do much um, about this. Now let's try this one. So what we have here is f sub z. That's x y minus e raised to negative z plus z tangent in tangent of y cosine of x sine inverse of x y z. So this is a pretty long equation. So what we have here is we need to take the derivative with respect to z, the partial derivative with respect to z, okay? So the first one is that we don't have any z here, so it becomes 0. So we have 0 on the first term. And then we have negative z, so that simply means that we need to take, uh, we just copy this one, and then the derivative of negative z is negative 1, okay? So this is the derivative of this e negative to the negative z. Now for this one, we have plus z tangent, um, or the expression inside. So we know that if we try to visualize this or internalize, we know that this is a product rule. So I'll start with having the product rule, so plus z, and then we need to multiply this with the derivative of this whole expression here. So that's tangent, so we know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and then the expression, whatever it is. So we have, I think, y, and then cosine of x sine inverse of x y z that's kind of long expression and then we need to differentiate again the term on the inside so that's y cosine of x sine inverse of x y z but we know that y is actually a constant so i can just uh, copy this by scalar multiple i mean scalar multiplicity rule so we have y so we have times y, and then the derivative of cosine of x sine inverse of x, y, z would be times negative sine of x sine inverse of x, y, z. Okay, so with this, I'm done with this term. I need to proceed with the derivative of x sine inverse of x, y, z, but we know that x is actually... Um, constant here so I'll just have to proceed with sine inverse of x y z so that's x times the inverse of sine would be the derivative of the inverse of sine is negative 1 square root of 1 minus x y z that's squared and then finally what we have is the derivative of x y z so that's simply equal to x and then y okay so i hope you were able to follow through the process because um, in cases like this when the others are not constant for example this y so we need to apply multiple product rules but we know that x and y are constant so it simplifies our computation and then that's just part of the uh, first process in product rule so we need to have the second part of the protocol where we copy this tangent and then that's y and then cosine of x sine inverse of x y z okay and then that's all because the derivative of z is simply one okay so we can actually simplify this i think so we have e raised to negative z and then we just have to multiply this so this one's negative this one's is negative again so this becomes positive i think so we have plus that's x y we also have y so x y squared 
so we have and then we also have x here so that's x squared y squared and then we also have z here so that's z and then x squared y squared and then i think we just have to copy this one so that's secant squared and then we have y cosine of x sine inverse of xyz and then we multiply this with sine of x sine inverse of x y z okay and then we divide all of this by the square root of 1 minus x squared y squared and then z squared okay? or you could just leave this as it is and of course we need to add this plus tangent of y cosine of x sine inverse of x y and z okay so i think this is our final answer and in your module you can actually see the answer right here so that's it the negative z so that's correct and then plus x y x squared y squared z so we also have this expression major na na lang yung ating z then we have secant squared y cosine of x sine inverse of xyz so that's correct and then we have sine x sine inverse of xyz okay and then we divide this with the square root of 1 minus x squared y squared and then z squared and then we add tangent of y cosine of x sine inverse of xyz okay so that is our correct answer now you might be noticing how this works is that you just have to keep yourself um, occupied with the idea of knowing the constants and the variables in the expression that you're differentiating because once you get confused along the way for example you're trying to differentiate this and then at the middle of your process you forgot to treat the remaining variables as constants so you will do product rule or probably additional um, rules to, to follow in somewhere in this point so with that you'll be able to get an incorrect answer plus it makes you it makes the process more difficult so keep in mind that when you're differentiating if you want you can label the expressions or the terms here say this one's a constant this one's a constant so you keep that in mind while you differentiate because um, once you get a hold of it it will be a lot easier because I believe that partial differentiation is a lot easier than, you know, the total differential. Because in partial differentiation, you treat most of the variables as constants. While in total differential, we treat them as if they're all um, variables that change with time. So I think that's all for partial differentiation. That's the introduction.